And let's go back to the federal courthouse in Lower Manhattan. It looks like there could be some action coming soon. In any case, we've got Tom Winter now, who is inside the courtroom for the arraignment. Tom, tell us what happened on this incredible case. That's right, Andrea. As a matter of fact, the senator is in the lobby of the courthouse behind me here, about to come out to that black SUV any moment now after pleading not guilty to a host of charges tied to bribery. The hearing uh, not lasting too long, as you would expect, and very pro forma. The uh, senator, as a matter of fact, did not even enter the not guilty plea himself. He had his attorney do that. He was seated approximately uh, 10 feet from me. He entered the courtroom at 11.13 a.m. Eastern time this morning. And uh, next to him, adjacent to him, uh, one of the defense tables was his wife, Nadine, who's also charged in this case, the senator wearing a black pinstripe suit uh, with a white shirt and a navy tie, uh, and just generally answered yes or no questions to the judge when prompted to do so. He's out on bail, as you well know by now, and so he'll be uh, able, along with all the other defendants, uh, to be out uh, pending this trial. He has to surrender his personal passport, but his official passport, the one that he would carry with him if he was on an official uh, CODEL, a congressional delegation, abroad uh, that he can keep. He can also go abroad uh, for uh, any sort of uh, business uh, uh, that's official with the Senate. And obviously, uh, you know, now stepping down or at least temporarily stepping back uh, from the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, but somebody who has uh, a lot of business overseas. And part of that is obviously one of the reasons why he's been charged here, Andrea. And his business overseas is also going to be very much under the spotlight. He's still a member of the committee. He's just not the right. chairman as I understand it. So he could be on uh, one of those congressional delegations. That's correct, and thank you for that clarification. And, you know, it's that overseas component of this uh, that sparked a counterintelligence investigation. As our colleague Jonathan Deans first reported yesterday, the uh, counterintelligence investigation is underway into the senator's wife to determine whether or not she could have been used by Egyptian intelligence. There, there's a number of Egyptian government officials and intelligence officers who are uh, referenced in the indictment, not necessarily named. And obviously, this. Uh, a, a, a number of details in there uh, about the senator's interactions and his wife's alleged interactions with the Egyptian government and potential intelligence officers there. Something that stuck out to me that hasn't gotten a lot of attention because, of course, the images from this case, uh, the cash that was allegedly found in the senator's jackets, the gold bars that we've allegedly, uh, that we've been talking about that are alleged part of this case. Um, but it was the senator's discussion or passing along of the amount of people that are were in the U.S. Embassy to Egyptian officials. That's something that tends to alarm uh, U.S. intelligence officials because, as you well know, Andrea, from uh, covering the foreign beat and the state beat for so long, uh, that information can sometimes be helpful to foreign governments to determine uh, who's doing what in the embassy and who might be there as a secretary or a typist, but maybe is in fact there on an intelligence mission for the United States. So uh, those are more details and more reporting to be done on that. Uh, so it's not necessarily surprising that uh, the federal counterintelligence investigators might be looking to this to see whether somebody was a winning or unwitting agent of a foreign government kind of doing work on behalf of the Egyptians. And that's something that we'll continue to, to track and closely follow uh, during this case. As the U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said when announcing the charges here, this is very much an ongoing investigation. So uh, just because the senator was charged last week doesn't mean that that's the period on the end of this case, Andrea. And Tom, one other thing I wanted to raise with you, because uh, we were told that the, um, well, the indictment says that the co-defendants were longtime friends, at least one of them, Hannah, was a longtime friend mm -hmm. of Nadine Menendez, not the senator, so right. that she was the introducer of these, these fellow defendants. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Catherine Christian was saying from a prosecutor, of course, to us earlier, was that she wanted to see whether Nadine Menendez and Senator Menendez are having separate or shared attorneys. Uh, what was the representation like for the two of them? Inside. Yeah, they, they do have they do have separate counsel. They have separate counsel. They're represented by uh, different law firms and different counsels. So um, just to clarify something I said before, I said that they were adjacent at the defense table. But the way that this court is laid out, that's totally common. Uh, I cannot imagine a scenario where you and I would be charged or be charged in the same case, Andrea. But even if we were, even if we had different interests and different counsel, it wouldn't be unusual 
unusual to have uh, both sides kind of sitting in the same row, if you will, uh, but there's clearly a distinction between the two. It's just the way the courtroom is laid out. It's not what you might typically envision in a courtroom where one side or prosecutors and one side is defense. The prosecutors sit in the first row and then there are additional rows for defense and the people that have been charged behind them. So just to give you a little bit of a sense of the way things are set up. But to your specific point, to the technical question, do they have separate attorneys? Yes, they do. Well, that, I just wanted to bring Catherine back in because Catherine Christian, you were the one who raised that very smart point. And it does indicate, you know, they have separate experiences, separate life experiences. She was texting, he was not so you could see a case where they're not pursuing the same legal track. Exactly. When you have one attorney representing two people, all of the communications with that attorney have to be shared by those two clients. They have their own separate attorneys. Whatever the senator says to his attorney, that attorney will not and cannot tell his wife and vice versa, the wife, whatever she says to her attorney. That attorney for Senator Menendez may say, look, I think you should do X, Y, and Z. The attorney for the wife could say the same thing. Now, and, you know, they're a married couple. Their communications with each other are privileged. But they, you know, don't have to reveal to each other what their attorneys are saying to them. So I think it's interesting. Um, it's usually a good thing. But it's interesting that they do have separate attorneys. Like I said, his wife is all over it. She's the one who got the car. She's the one who reached out to the Manhattan jeweler to try to sell the gold. She's the one who did most of those text messages. Uh, she's the one who made the introduction to the co-defendant, uh, Hannah, and then to the Egyptian officials. So she's all over it. Um, and I also want to say that for the cause of his resignation, as a criminal defense strategy, it is not good for him to resign. I'm talking strictly as a criminal defense strategy. You want to walk around. I'm still the senator. You want, you know, the prospective juror panels to see that you're still going to D.C. Now, probably none of his colleagues will ever be photographed with him, but he still keeps the trappings of being a senator. So for a criminal defense strategy, he's probably not going to resign. As well as for income. In fact, uh, and by the way, it's also true that this is not a longstanding marriage. She only met him in 2018 after his previous case was dismissed. Uh, they said that they met in an IHOP and, you know, that then they were quickly, you know, within five months were engaged and then were married.